Okay, I just added something to the log here so we can see these params that are coming into this request. And this is a bit of magic that goes on with this library I'm using in Ruby called Washout. It uh, translates things for you. Um, basically, these args are coming in as params. So we're, we're going to see that down here. I also opened a document. I'm going to have this in the, the uh, like I have a PDF that accompanies this package. It's, it's a pretty good web connector overview. It's a very good one, actually, uh, by Keith Palmer, who was just kind of like a big integration guy, uh, answers a lot of questions on the, the forums, and not so much anymore, but he's got a lot of good information out there. So let's give him credit. And I'm going to use this document because it's written down. That's nice, so we can follow uh, that as well. But um, I'm going to leave it. We're, we're talking about the authenticate right now. And um, but let's actually do a real request and we'll go back to that document as needed. Okay, so let's go go back here now. And uh, got auto run off. We got it checkboxed. And we're going to do update selected again. And uh, got no data uh, exchange required. Let's go back to now. So I got a running log here. This is uh, the SOAP server I'm running again. So let me go back up to the, so we're in Authenticate right there. You see that? And line 60, okay. And here's what was sent to us. String username nil. Yeah, I would mentioned like when, um, see we didn't get the prompt and I didn't go back to it because I don't want to mess around with this a ton. But um, when you set this up, what's going to happen is you're going to get you're going to make an application here, and then it's going to have no password. And then when you first try to do an update select, it's going to ask you for a username and password. You just instruct your users to just put in the password. Don't worry about the username. You don't want to make it complex. Just do one thing, put in the password. You don't need the username; it's not required. So that's what I recommend you do: is just use a password. And that's all I'm doing here. So I, this is the password that, again, comes from here, our, our setup page. It's right there. All right, that should be it, right? Uh, 7866 at the end. Okay, so that's coming in. And let's get out of that. Go back here. And I'll go to this class, which is, again, it's over here. Okay, and let me switch back. Okay, so let's look at what's happening here. Okay, you go through the initialization of the class where it sets the parameters so you can use them in different methods and we go, the first thing we do is a thing called determine. So, determine just decides if you have the right password. So that's the first thing it does, is just it does this a test thing. And that just looks up your account. You know, it's going to look up this. And it's on an account level. Remember, this is a multi-tenant app. Now, I have some things in here. OK, th this is maybe a good time to breach this. I uh, don't want to get too confusing. But um, I, remember, this is the sample app that you're seeing up and running here. All right, when I'm in the root directory, here, I'm in the library code, all right? So um, there's two things going on. You're not going to have this. You're going to have maybe more of an integrated thing. So just try to follow along. I don't want to get too confusing. But I have, I just have things that you can set what your account, what your auth model is. Like it, you may have something called, I'm using account on the account level. So not a user level for, for this password. It's on an account level, organization level. You may ha I'm using a model called account. You may have something different. All this does here is you can set these things 
and the attribute on the account, I use accounts QBSDK API key. Okay, you can, if you're using this library, you can set that information. I believe I have it in for Ruby or for Rails. Uh, config initializers QB SDK. Um, hmm. Maybe I'm just using the, the defaults for those. I'm pretty sure I have defaults for those. Okay, I don't want to get too confusing, but I want I just want to say that this code is is basically coming up to the account model and searching if we have this. You're going to have this in your code. It's going to be more straightforward in your code because you're just going to hard code it right in there depending on what you have. Anyway, you're just seeing is this the right password, right? And if that's successful, we are going to determine whether we continue or not with this request. And I'll get a little bit into this document here on what you send back to the SOAP, to the SOAP client again. And continue or halt just means do I have anything in the queue? All right, now the first thing, let's talk about this, and we're gonna get right into the queue. I thought that would have a separate episode, but we gotta get right into the queue because it's so integrated. So what does ticket mean? Each session you do with the QuickBooks web connector, it, it, they call it a session, a ticket, maybe the technical term is when you look in the log. Um, you can have multiple of these sessions kicking off. So um, you need to be able to pass this in because this is how the next requests are going to be determined next requests in how we go down the line here like okay authenticate that worked now we go now you send request xml to the web to the web connector i'm going to query customers it sends back soap a soap response you process that oh here's the new customers i'm going to make them in my app to main this is a stateless thing that's going on to ma maintain the state, you need to have the ticket. Yeah, it's a ticket. Technically, it's called a ticket. That's why I'm calling it a ticket. To understand the state that you're on, you need to pass a ticket to each. It's like a session, you know, like a session variable, right? Like that's what we set sessions in web applications so we know what the heck is going on on the next request. Same thing here. You need to make one up. What I do, um, now e even if... Um, there's no jobs in the queue. I'll get to the queue in a second and why you'll need to have a queue. Everybody has to have a queue when you're doing this. What I do, um, you have to make a unique ticket number. All right, or you're gonna um, really create some problems. You could create some phony requests. Um, this has to be unique. At the same time, I don't use a unique key in the database. I'm gonna tell you why. But let's just get right into the ticket number and all the all that jazz right now. Uh, so every app is going to have a queue. Your app, you're going to make a queue because what's going on is remember that the 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 web connector is pinging you to see if you have stuff to do. You stick that on a queue, and they're going to check the queue. So you're going to authenticate. Is there anything in the queue? Is there any unprocessed? I have a, a column called processed. Let's go back to this. Uh, zero, unprocessed, process, one, processed. So if there's any zeros in there, oh, that, that's we want, we want to query and do stuff with your QuickBooks. All right, so that's how you're doing this. It's pinging, web connector is pinging your SOAP server. You're putting things on the queue. If they're unprocessed, then they go over and you, got, you talk back and forth until you get it all resolved. Um, the ticket is a column on here and remember it's got to be unique but it can't be you can't use a unique key because you could have multiple things in that queue you could have five queue things that are unprocessed 
you want them to go in the same ticket. All right, but yet it has to be a unique run. Like you can't hit any other ticket runs here. Uh, let's see if we got any that are the same um, for multiple rows. You can see here, look at this one here. Is this one the same? Let's get rid of this. Yeah, see, see here, there's four rows in the queue and they got the same ticket number but we need to be unique. We can't have another one because we don't want to draw some old transactions in and mess stuff up from another transaction. Now, there's two things you could do here. If you wanted to use a unique database key and not, um, I'm just using a secure random hash. If it's this in Ruby, it's pretty much guaranteed to be unique. I'm gonna get to the exact what determines an open queue run in a second, um, I mentioned that it's processed, but it also has to do with priority. But generally speaking, a queue, an open queue run that we're having here, I hope this is all understandable. See, because we're going to go to this next. So we generate the number. So we see that we try to generate this big, secure, unique number. Now we're going to determine if there's any, any actual open jobs. Okay, let's look at that code. So we got app, models, and I'm gonna go into the queue. Let's look at open jobs. Where are we? Here we go, open jobs. Yeah, this is as um, simple as this. If something is process false or zero, that's what's considered an open job. So your ticket column only needs to be unique to that degree. Like even if you did actually duplicate this number, you're not going to grab it for an open job because down here they're all already going to be processed already. Okay, So it's not that difficult to do this in the same table. But what I was going to say, if, if you did want to use a database unique key, you'd have to make an additional table. Like in, in one project, I had a table called QBSDK ticket. And that had a unique key on that row, just guarantee uniqueness. And then that would ha that would associate to queues. Okay, so the queue ID, so it would have that relationship, a has many relationship with the queues. I don't think you need to do that. I think you just do one table and do it this way. Use a, the big, whatever in your language generates a secure number. and. Uh, Again, it has to be process zero for an open run. So you have less of a chance of ever getting a duplicate at all. Uh, you can even check to see if there's another duplicate key. It, but you don't have to do that. You would just do it um, really just like this. And it's going to be guaranteed to be unique. Um, you can see that there is an order of priority here. Let's just talk a little bit about that because we're just in this right now. And let's go back to the database. Sometimes you want to set the priority in the queue runs. You can see there's various things I'm making a customer, either adding or modifying a customer or some things. We'll get into those details later. We're que querying for items. Um, the queue is always going to go on who's first. If you jammed something in the priority, that'll go first. I don't use this a ton. I would I would put it in your design. Okay, so you have all the design here. I'd, I'd follow it really just like this. There is edge cases where as something's happening, you want this to take priority. Like the customer needs to get updated for the invoice. And you want to make sure it runs first. Having a priority column is nice in that way, but you don't use it a ton, all right? Um, but add it in. And then add in a very similar logic to this for determining an open, what's an, considered an open job. Okay, so let's keep moving so we understand that. If the jobs are empty, we send back a value of, or we don't send it back yet. We make this thing called value none. If it is, uh, there's things to do on there. There's a bunch of things with zeros here, like you got one or more. Then we're, we're going to go in and 
what we're going to do is we're going to get that ticket number and in a this is in in rails an active record this is a way of doing a transaction so just to make sure all of these rows here get this exact ticket number and if there's any failure at all we blow out that trans we don't do the transaction right if there's any kind of problems so we do a full transaction because we're going to mark all of these rows and it could be a lot it could be a lot in that queue especially if you're having your client only do like a like a daily run um, there could be a case where you tell them to turn off auto run and they're just at every night they kind of just sink in um, you, you're going to have a whole uh, big thing marked and, and you may in those cases I wouldn't recommend it because you could start running into request problems uh, one of these sessions only lasts for like two minutes. Uh, that's very important uh, to know. Um, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, have had talked to, I haven't had this problem, but um, big query requests are timing out because your, your queue is too big. You, you can't make a big queue. Um, you need to break down some of your requests. Um, no, I, I, I'm sorry. If a single request goes on for longer than two minutes, it'll time out. This will come into play when you're doing queries, like you're querying for all the customers or all the transactions, all the invoices for the last six months. So a single request that goes more than two minutes times out. Um, so it's not such a big deal, actually, if you do a full run, because as long as each individual request is less than two minutes. This is, this thing could run forever, so I don't want to misinform you. Um, it's a single request that goes for more than two minutes will time out. All right, so this especially is a case on big queries or big transactions, big batch transactions. Got to watch those, but that's on an individual level. Okay. All right, let's go back to this now. So so that's what happens here. Like you mark everything for this ticket. But let, let's just say, because let's just keep to this scenario because we'd have nothing in the queue. It says no data exchange required. That's because what I'm sending back is this. I'm sending back the ticket number. That's required always. I guess that's why I'm setting it, um, even though we're not using it. Uh, and we're not marking it in the database either because we, we just have to send it back in our request. So anyway, um, we're marking the result here. And the result has to be an array. Like, I don't know why, but it has to be an array for, for this particular step. It's the only step that requires to send back an array. And to send back an array, we're, we're still dealing in the context of how the washout gem works. Uh, we're sending back actual XML, but um, we're sending back this TNS authenticate result thing. And it needs to be an array right here, believe it or not. And it's the only way, it's the only time that that's required. Okay, so it's a string array. Um, there's more details in this document I mentioned um, here about what you send back. You would NVO for non-valid username. Um, the ticket comes back. You just say none if there's just nothing to do. Say nothing to do. There's more things you can do too. More things you can send back. You can send a, a company file if you want to do multiple company files. I'm not going to cover multiple company files. Like if you hit that thing, um, that's fine. You, you can do it, but it's not going to be part of this training. Um, you can send some optional things about the uh, number of minutes to wait for doing the next update. Minimum seconds for web connector uh, should allow for the update sessions, between update sessions. I believe this is not, this is the two minutes thing here. I don't think this is adjustable. Um, but anyway, that's what you're sending back. And, and in this particular case, we're just sending back a none. Okay, I'm gonna end it here. This is probably about 10 or minutes. I wanna keep these things in these little bite size. That goes over the authenticate response. Now we'll, we'll do next, we'll do something that's in the queue actually.